Okay, yeah, I think I think we're live, gentlemen. Yeah. All right, here we go. So the Happy at Work podcast, we're live, and today is going to be an awesome show. This is going to be fantastic because I know you guys have all heard about the metaverse, virtual reality, augmented reality, and you're like, well, all right, what is this about? Is this for real? For not? Is this not real? So we're bringing two experts who are steeped into this field and know it really well. And what we're going to do is two things today. First one we could definitely do. We're going to talk all about the metaverse, virtual reality, everything you want to know about it. Second part, we're going to try to do the second half of this in the metaverse and see if it works out. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. And maybe Lerad and Gil, you could introduce yourself and tell you about your respective companies. And then we'll just kind of give everybody everything they wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask about the metaverse. Sounds great. Gil, you want to? kick us off sure so great to be here thanks jack for inviting us i'm uh, uh, one of the co-founders of did together with uh, Sela blondheim and uh, eliran kuta and uh, what we do at uh, did is uh, we create videos using ai and we are experts in reenactment of humans. Uh, we are a SaaS company selling to businesses, an API first company. Uh, the end uh, users in the enterprises we sell to are uh, developers, creators, and product teams. And we do projects like uh, some of our clients are, for example, in my heritage, which build, which connected to our API. That's and where can I, can I interject a second? Ago? I think that's what most people know you for. This is, if I understand it correctly, when you look at these old timey pictures of your great 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 grandmother, and they come to life. That's that's you. So the people who've seen those online and everyone's seen it, that's you behind it, right? Yeah, deep nostalgia is basically our technology. It's a product of my heritage, which is a client of DID which enabled hundreds, a hundred million uh, photos in the last uh, several uh, quarters to be brought to life. Uh, we brought MyHeritage to be the number one app in the Apple App Store in the free apps charts in 22 countries, including the US and the partnership is growing. Uh, we also have clients such as uh, the Indian TikTok, Warner Brothers, Mondelez, Photo mine and a large uh, tech giants and museums and e-learning companies around the world. That's amazing. And also, I think you're you're trying to make you know how we've all seen that commercial from Mark Zuckerberg, where they look kind of cartoonish. But what I understand too is you're trying to build it such that they would look like real people, right? Yes. So this is uh, the future of. Uh, of DID is uh, holding a strategic and important part in uh, also the topic of uh, this meeting, the metaverse, uh, where our focus and uh, specific expertise and strategic position will be around making these avatars, our representations, uh, look, behave, and interact with each other in the most realistic way. And we are doing it from a still image. No need for hardware and for uh, the glasses that we previously put, only a single image. When you say not the glasses, what do, you, do you mean like the Oculus glasses where you could just see it? But Yeah, so the idea what, what we are working on is uh, so, as you mentioned before, uh, the, my heritage, deep nostalgia, how we brought uh, people to life that were, these were photos in uh, 2D, upper body. Now we are working on a uh, full body 3D from a single image. So basically me and Liron uh, can be in the metaverse and call you through Zoom and we'll just take a single image of you and we will be able to create an avatar from wow. this single image. And how, we'll talk how, about, yeah. how far away is that from happening? 
So we are working full power on that. And uh, I estimate about uh, one year. That's not bad. That's not bad. So in one year, we're going to go from those like, I don't know what was that rope, that red robot sitting around Mark Zuckerberg's table. You could go from that to actually looking at myself, you, Laurent, Christine in real life ish. Yes, either uh, us, but also this big robot or Albert Einstein or whoever you want to be, but making them laugh and behave and smile like the way they act in real life. Not the, the red robot, but let's say you are with your family going into the my heritage or ancestry or whatever a virtual world and each one will has his own avatar maybe one will be a monkey a spider-man and one will look like himself but you will recognize them because the the smile the laugh the dance movements if you go to a to a disco we look like themselves in real life this is going to be our unique uh, advantage in the metaverse. And when you're going to meet people which can't wear the Oculus and don't have hardware and cameras around them because they are no longer with us, like your grand grand grandfather, Albert Einstein, Napoleon or whoever, you will be able, they will also look real and you will be able to interact with them as if everything is real. So it's the amazing. experience will be, even better than real life. It will be immersive and people will enjoy spending their time in this new reality. And, and you're working with Laron because Laron, you're, you're building, well, maybe you could share what you're building because you're working on a lot of things within your organization, right? Yeah, so kind of the Ghost Group is a platform company for virtual reality and augmented reality companies. So we've got 12 different businesses all focusing on enterprise use cases of uh, immersive technologies, virtual reality and augmented reality. And our companies are basically building the software that allows organizations across the board from kind of uh, companies to universities, to hospitals, to the government to start entering into this immersive world and kind of taking all those baby steps forward using our technology to start building their presence in, in, in the virtual worlds. So you hear virtual world, augmented reality, metaverse, like what's the difference between yeah, so let me they of, use it interchangeably? Yeah, let me kind of put kind of some order into the definitions and how yeah. they all come together. So uh, start with augmented reality. Augmented reality is adding a digital layer to the world we live in. So to interact with augmented reality, you're either using your phone and tablet today, kind of uh, all kind of recent for kind of iPhone, iOS and uh, Android phones have that capability. You can add digital objects or people or experiences into the world around you. The second alternative is using uh, augmented reality headsets like Magic Leap or M Microsoft HoloLens to interact with the world and add experiences to that. So in the augmented reality world, we you see the world around you and you just place an object or a digital element in there. So you can be sitting in your room and I can add a coffee mug to your table that doesn't really exist there, or I can add a uh, avatar of Gil sitting in front of you that you will be able to interact with while you're still seeing the room around you. So that's augmented reality. When you go to virtual reality, you're basically being transported into another world. So you put on the uh, VR headsets like the Oculus Quest that we're going to be using later in the show or other headsets that exist out there. And once you put the headset on, you no longer see the world around you, the real world, and you're teleported to a different location. And those are v virtual reality experiences. So that's AR and VR. The metaverse is basically going to be a uh, connection of worlds that build experiences that we built by a variety of different companies that you'll be able to spend time in doing everything that we're doing today, either in the real world or in the 2D digital world, 
you'll be able to do those in the metaverse. The metaverse will be a, a virtual reality, mostly world, but there will have elements of that in augmented reality that you can bring into the real world. And in there, we will work, we will uh, learn, we will shop, we will entertain ourselves, and we will have social experiences, all of that within those worlds. So there'll be a, a multitude of worlds, like there are a multitude of websites right now on the internet, and they'll all be connected. So you'll be able to move between those worlds and experience whatever the builders of those worlds have built for you. So when you say building the tools, so you know, <clears throat> you have seen Decentraland, the sandbox, you know, other things. So you would you would create the behind the scenes tools that they need to do whatever they have to do to build a building, a tower, to hold a fashion show, to have all the other things that we see, a uh, live concert. Is that kind of sort of what you do? You yeah. kind of make it possible? So if, so if you look at kind of basically take any experience, let's take a virtual store. So right. you'll need to have a store. You'll need to have the capability of multiple people to interact there. You'll need to have uh, either kind of human-based or avatar uh, or uh, AI-based characters that will be roaming around that. Every single object in that store needs to be created. So every dress or shirt you put on, every kind of uh, table that something is laid on, and kind of all the interactions around that are basically the technology that will allow the metaverse to happen. What, do you, for somebody who's going to go on, so who hasn't been on you know, virtual reality, the metaverse at all, what would you suggest? Like, what would be the first step to kind of dip your toe in the water just to feel it out? So if you, if you haven't kind of been in, in virtual reality, uh, the best way is getting a headset. It's only $300, so it's not kind of uh, crazily expensive to get one. And there are a multitude of social virtual reality experiences that you can go in and experience, uh, kind of just kind of go out there, kind of uh, uh, many of the kind of the, the, the meeting spaces in, in virtual reality have a kind of a free version that you can go in and just go and experience those worlds and see the future of where those things are, are going to go. Uh, and some of those worlds have kind of pretty big communities so you can find people that have interests like yours and, and kind of uh, spend time with them while you're at your home. And, and it's, there's a lot of business opportunities, right? Because I spoke to uh, you know, Andrew Kegel, and I, I apologize mm -hmm. if I'm mispronouncing his name, CEO of tokens.com. And he dropped $2.5 million for buying space in Decentraland with the idea that he's gonna host this huge fashion show in March. So do you see that this, this is going to be a lot, do you think that a, a lot of businesses are going to start kind of migrating there because it's kind of like the internet was right at the beginning where there's all this opportunity to, to stake your claim? Yeah, no, this is exactly the same. We're, we're kind of basically going through the similar cycle. So uh, early kind of like mid, late 90s, when the internet was starting to become a thing, at the time I was doing management consulting and federated department store, the owners of, of Macy's and Bloomingdale's and, and so on, came to me as a consultant and say, kind of this internet is happening. We have a website. What else can we do with it? Those are the type of questions. So and, and, and websites have evolved from just a place where you just kind of put your brand and some information to a place where you interact with your customer, obviously sell using e-commerce, showing products, and really engaging and understanding and differentiating uh, the way you interact with your customer. The metaverse is gonna open for brands, the ability to do that at a kind of immersive level. You can build stores, you can do fashion shows, you can do concerts, you can kind of have meetings, you can kind of customize multiple worlds that will fit multiple uh, types of demographics of your customers. And you can do all of that while kind of building that immersive connection with your customer. And it, I'd it, like to, to add to that, uh, and also go back to your question about what's the difference between AR, VR, and the metaverse. So Leon is uh, basically making this uh, dream happen, but this is a dream of uh, uh, people like uh, you know, Zuckerberg, and uh, Microsoft, Epic Games, etc. And what is this uh, metaverse? It's basically the the definition of, of metaverse is a new reality beyond reality. 
And the, the dream here is uh, that this is going to be the next uh, internet, uh, the place where we spend most of our time, right? In order for us to have uh, fashion shows and brands and people actually walking in the metaverse, people going to concerts, et cetera, what we believe at DID is that there is one thing that is uh, missing. In order for us to spend uh, most of our time in the metaverse, we have to feel like the interaction we have with the people we love, with the people around us is real, is authentic. That if we go to dance in a concert with our friends, we will actually have at least as fun, if not more fun than going to a concert in real life. And if like we are going to, uh, if you're going to, to dating, you'll prefer to go to dating uh, in a virtual reality than in real life. And like uh, we're going to try soon, if you're going to do a work meeting, you prefer to do it in the metaverse instead than in real uh, life. And for that exactly, uh, we did the partnership with uh, Liron because he has all his companies, they are able to do everything uh, metaverse related. And DID brings the AI component of making these interactions, movements, emotions uh, between these avatars and representations, which are a very important part in the metaverse, be super realistic. So speaking of that, Moran, Gil, what do you, do you think we should try? Give it a shot to see if we could and Max, I don't know if you can hear us, to try to put on the glasses and see if we could show the audience what we're talking about. Sure, that, that should be exciting. Okay, so we're up, we're up for it, we can do it? Yeah, all yes. right. All right. So this is kind of what people could see, right? Where this is the background, we're sitting, we're hanging out, it's nighttime somewhere in Florida, I presume, and we're just having a chill conversation, huh? Yeah, this is exactly kind of what you can do. You can build any of these worlds and kind of right now we look like pretty cool avatars, but doesn't really look <laughs> like us. What our partnership <laughs> with the idea is, is to allow us to not only look like us, but have the same facial expressions that we do because we each one of us has its own facial expression and its own way we react to things or, or way we get frustrated, we laugh, we kind of smile and kind of bring that kind of facial expression into our virtual faces. Up to the, the most smallest thing that if, uh, if I'll smile now, I don't know if you see me smiling, mm -hmm. you'll see the little wrinkles near my eyes. Uh, we call it uh, crossing the uncanny valley, where not only uh, your eyes think that they're looking at uh, something real, but also your mind doesn't recognize that something is weird. Because we human, from uh, the, the past and evolution, we know how to recognize and understand the situation from looking at faces. So this is what we succeeded to do at DID. Wow. Yeah, because it does seem realistic. I mean, it's an arbiter, but I just saw you blink. <laughs> That's so uh, are you, all right. Drag so you're reaching your hand out. Okay. <laughs> Where's your hand? My, oh, it's my I hit. <laughs> Woo. Oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> that is so crazy. <laughs> that is wild. Now, is it possible <laughs> to have a different background? Like to switch it up? Yes. Like put us in an well, office? We're not going to switch it up right now, but you can be okay. anywhere you want to be. You can we do have that? multiple multiple rooms. We'll just need to move between the rooms, which we're not going to do right now since we okay. need to to coordinate that but we've got you can build first of all you can build any world you want and we've got a variety that we already built uh, so you can go from kind of from one session to the other and have different di different backgrounds and different places you want to go so if you want to be let's say you want to have let's say you have real life examples you want you have a distributed network a distributed workforce where people are working remote and you want to bring people together so maybe you bring them to a really exotic location and they could sit around and chat and meet each other, and they probably haven't seen their coworkers in a year or two years, and just just have a real like a real life experience like we're doing now, and just having a nice conversation. Yeah. And 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 we have different spaces for different use cases. So if we just want to chat, 
and sit down and chat and have an interview, this is a good space for that. If we want to have kind of just mingle and networking, we can have an open space where we can just walk around and freely move between people and, and chat with whoever we're near. If we want to do a work session, we have spaces that have whiteboards and kind of an, uh, presentations and videos and kind of things that you can allow us to collaborate together in virtual space. So it depends on what you want to do, there's, there's, there's virtual spaces that fit that need. You know, I, I don't I know how you guys feel, but it feels comfortable having this conversation. You know, it doesn't, Yes. You know, let's say as opposed to Zoom, where I'm conscious that there's a box, and I'm looking at myself in the box and checking my hair and checking, you know, my shirt and tie or whatever. Here, without, I don't feel that way. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? You feel more of yourself. Yeah. You, you feel immersed. You feel like you're sitting yeah. here right now talking to the two of us, or I'm talking to the two of you, together kind of it's not it doesn't feel like we're just watching a zoom and especially the more people you have the more zoom feels like something that's not a real conversation that multiple right. people are having around the table and this space allows you to do that yes and especially in times like now in covid where you you don't see people anymore in real life mm -hmm. you see them in 2d i had just a funny example we're now uh, uh working with the a large uh, company that is doing uh, due diligence uh, on uh, DID and I was conversing with uh, one of the managers for several weeks at, in Zoom and uh, only after uh, about a month we realized that we are neighbors. We actually <laughs> saw each other in real life yeah. and we didn't uh, understand that. So the idea is that we will be able to conduct such meetings and that it will feel and look much more realistic and comfortable than it is now. Leon's company is able to, being able to do this amazing experience, but in this partnership we say we are bringing life into the metaverse. We are making it as real as uh, in real life and even more. So imagine you will speak, uh, you will sit here with someone from Japan. And he will speak, but you will hear him and see his lips moving in English. And he will hear you and see your lips moving in Japanese. These are the, the such of the things that we are working at at DID. Wait, wait, wait. So they would, it would translate it or, or you would be able to have a transcript? I'm not sure if I follow that. So if you're speaking with people so with currently, different languages. Uh, uh, some, one of the things we just uh, recently launched at TechCrunch Disrupt and soon in about a month, there is going to be a, a huge uh, announcement about that, and I hope you will hear it and it will be everywhere like uh, some of our uh, projects. is a product we call Speaking Portraits, where you insert any text at any language, you take any single photo, any, uh, it can be an image of Albert Einstein, of a cartoon, Mickey Mouse, or of yourself when you were younger, or your grand-grand-grandfather, you can take all of Wikipedia, choose a language, Chinese, and you will hear this person speaking in Chinese. So <laughs> imagine simply with voice to text solutions like Siri, what the Amazon, Microsoft, Google have, you can easily uh, have a person speak in the metaverse, but you will hear him and see him speak in another language. That's amazing. That's mind blowing. And so, uh, I mean, what a way to bridge the gap between different cultures, right? Where you could have people from all over the world connecting with each other and making it easy to have conversations. Yes, yes remarkable. I think what, what the metaverse is going to do is further connect us as a global society, where we're all going to go wherever we want to go and interact with each other and create kind of no longer will language be a barrier no longer will geography be a barrier. All those things will happen kind of in the metaverse, bringing everybody together. That is why. So, so Laurent, what are some, what are the, some of the interesting things that you're working on at your shop? And I know you have like, well, you know, like a hundred different divisions by now. You're growing by leaps and bounds. But what are some of, yeah, some no, of the we're, interesting we're, things? We're, we're, we're con constantly pushing the boundaries of what could be done kind of we're creating virtual uh, uh, campuses. So students are going to go to a virtual campus, 
hang out in the campus and then go into a virtual classroom. Uh, another pretty cool example of something that kind of will be fun is we're using exactly this space here for dating coaching. So uh, we're working with a kind of high-end uh, dating coach that helps people kind of date more effectively. And she's using this space to uh, help people get comfortable in dates. So this is kind of a great use of, of the metaverse where kind of you can actually kind of use the technology we've built to have a session and then watch yourself react, kind of do things in that kind of virtual date and kind of analyze what you did right and what you did wrong with the coach kind of over your shoulder. This is, this is kind of like mind-blowing kind of technology. That's nice. amazing. And also because it makes you feel more comfortable. I, I, you know, the same way I think an actor uses a different name or a writer uses a nom de plume is that it's, you can feel your more real self without, you know, you know, having that awkwardness. So I think it's the same way with that dating coach. Instead yeah. of you sitting there face to face with someone in real life, which could be very uncomfortable and very awkward and very scary for some people, especially if you're introverted. But if you have that avatar, I think it gives you that buffer, right? So it, it yeah. makes it a little it, easier. It allows you to look at yourself more objectively. And kind yeah. of, so imagine kind of, so one of the things we can do with the technology here in this Fortel room is record ourselves doing this conversation and then play back mm -hmm. that conversation in front of us so we can see what we did and we can really objectively look at us because you're looking at the avatar and not really looking at yourself in a more yeah. objective kind of way, which is, is really powerful as you need to train people on doing kind of things that they're uncomfortable doing. I hear from and, so and many I think people. When, when, yeah, and when and the next element is bringing kind of what uh, DID is working on into these avatars, so they really look and and feel like yourself. So when you meet yourself after you met an avatar of yourself, you'll be able to tell that this is Jack and this is Gil based on how you move your face and how you move your eyes and how you mm -hmm. smile. That's good. And to go back when you said about Zoom, there's so many people who tell me, and I feel the same way. To be very transparent where you end up kind of looking at yourself in that box and it makes you a little self-conscious. And I think that takes away yeah. from paying attention to the conversation because you're more like, okay, you know, how do I look? You know, oh gosh, I don't look good. The lighting is bad. You know, this is bad. Oh, my backdrop. I can't believe I have this backdrop. And it could be a big disadvantage. And, you know, it's been reported. A lot of people just feel uncomfortable, don't even turn on the camera. So here, I think it's, it's, it just will make people more comfortable interacting. I, I think so. I, I definitely see that on Zoom and kind of Zoom fatigue is real and yeah. it, it doesn't feel immersive. This feels like the three of us sitting around a table and having <laughs> a conversation <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and that, that's the power of VR and then you can start imagining all the other things we can do together in spaces and, and, and the future is unlimited. You can build anything in this thing and kind of anything we want to do we can do regardless of where we are physically. Yeah, some of our mutual prospects, for example, are a place to go and dance with mm -hmm. people or uh, like a history heritage place where you can walk and interact with your loved ones and people from the back in the history. But as you said, the conversations are are much easier. Imagine a conversation with a psychologist or dating. Mm -hmm. It's going to be super exciting. This is wild. So, so gentlemen, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and showing us this. And, and, and I think the people who are watching this now and then once we download it and, you know, kind of edit it, clean it up and share it on social media, they could really get a sense of what we're talking about. Because I think most people are kind of curious but didn't know. So it's almost like this was our way of saying, hey, here's what it is. Here's what's going on. And for the people who felt, oh, I don't want to go there because I want to spend real life. This is kind of real life. It's just different. It's a little, right? It's, yeah. it's where we're having, we're having it, a conversation. It's a different layer of real life. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of, it doesn't replace real life. It augments it. Amazing. Amazing. So do you want to head back to the, uh, to, um, the other reality? <laughs> and then we'll kind of wrap Let's everything up. <laughs> okay. See you back in right. 2D world. Uh, okay. That, yeah. that, that was amazing. That was so wild. <laughs> that, you know, it really, 
it really makes you feel, I, did, I, I swear, I'm not saying this to make you guys feel good. I, it's like, I felt I was just hanging out chatting, you know? Yeah, no, so, so you look at this and you look at that <laughs> and I feel better there than I feel here. Yeah, you know I what, I do. I, it feels more natural. I, you know what, dude, absolutely. Because there, it's not like just like three friends hanging out, just shooting the breeze, right? Here now, it's, it's I'm conscious. We're like, we're in our boxes. Yeah. It's, and the sound quality was good too. Like the sound quality there was like a real conversation, not like Zoom. Now that we're saying Zoom has that little, I don't know, that little echo. Like, and, and, and the other thing is the sound comes from where you are in VR. So kind of you were kind of basically sitting in front of me and I could hear your sound coming from you. Yeah. Here, all the sound is coming together. I kind of hear everybody as if they're yeah. coming from the same speaker. Wow. This is, I, I'm so glad, I'm so glad you, you folks took the time out because it's one thing to talk about it, read about it, but it's another thing where you just see it and, and you see how just natural it flows. And what, what I, I, I want to keep it open door. So as time goes on, because these things are moving so quickly, as you come up with new developments to invite you back and to showcase the cool things that you're doing. We, we would love to. Sure. Yeah, this is good. Anything else, anything else that maybe I didn't ask you both that you like to share, you know, with the audience about the metaverse, virtual reality. Uh, we didn't talk about NFTs, so if you, you folks are doing anything with NFTs. Yeah, no, cryptos. we're definitely, we're working on kind of basically, so, so as I look at the metaverse, there's three components that are going to make the metaverse happen. Three technologies. One is immersive technologies, VR and AR. We talked about that. The second one is AI. We talked about that. That's what Gil and MDAD are doing. The third element is blockchain. And blockchain is going to bring three different elements to the metaverse. One is identity verification. Because technology like what DID is building kind of could make anyone look like anything. We want to know who we're talking about. And blockchain will allow me to verify that I'm talking to the real Jack Kelly and not to someone else. So that's one element. The second element is NFTs, which you mentioned. All of the assets in the metaverse are going to be NFTs. Doesn't matter if it's something very valuable or not. It could be just like a coffee mug. It is an NFT, which means it belongs to someone. It stays somewhere. You can move it around. You can give it to someone. It could have utility in multiple worlds, different utilities, different look, but it's the same asset. So that's important where NFTs come into play. And the last one is the currency. So as you move between worlds, you'll be able to buy services and solutions and all of that will tie up together. So and that's I, the third leg of that stool. So you've got immersive technologies, VR and AR, you've got AI and you've got blockchain. All three of those together are going to make the metaverse what we are all dreaming it will be. I like just regarding the idea and NFTs. So we work a lot of uh, uh, many of our partners and, and clients people who are uh, making NFTs and uh, they are using our uh, deep learning uh, capabilities in order to increase the value of their uh, NFTs. Uh, that's one. And uh, actually also, that would make good NFTs, Gil, to yeah, have, no, no, people, people to like have those, people. like just instead of having a board eight yacht club, you could have like, you know, your great, 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 great grandmother, you know, as, as kind of an NFT avatar. Anyone, you have a famous speech of someone. Yeah. Find me a good picture of him. We'll make the, the speech uh, yeah. real. But, and also we have two big surprises, which are going to be mainly for creators, uh, consumers, creators, people also who deal with NFTs. Uh, we just got uh, two awards. I was just being updated right now. Uh, so in, uh, in these two occasions, we're going to announce these uh, new uh, surprises, one in uh, South by Southwest where we won, uh, we're in the finalist of the uh, Innovation Award and one in the uh, uh, DigiDay Awards uh, Europe for the best use of AI. So over there, we're going to announce cool things on this topic. Well, that's amazing. I, I look forward to seeing what you both are doing and, and, and keep in touch and we'll, and we'll bring it up. We'll have it, we can have it like on our, you know, a regular basis when you have these new cool developments and now we can see we have the technology that, and Max, is, Max, you did a great job in putting it all together. So then we can kind of show it off. So this is great. So people could actually see firsthand, hey, this is, this is what's going on. That sounds like a plan. Excellent. Gentlemen, well, We're thank you so much for meeting time. you in the metaverse next time. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Bye. Bye. Thanks. If you guys can stay on the show just one second before 
before you bail, okay? I'm gonna just stop taping. And I, for the audience, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped, I hope you learned. Any questions, feel free. I'll give the information for Gil and Laurent and their companies if you wanna reach out and learn more about what they're doing or you have an idea. So this way you could hit them up. They're really great guys. And uh, thank you very much for watching.